Have you ever wondered why some substations are so much bigger than others, or why some seem to have so much more equipment? Well, today we will begin to try to answer that by talking about common types of substation configurations. This series includes radio bus, ring bus, breaker and a half, and GIS. For better understanding, I will also mention the pros and cons of each one, and finally talk about why it's important to understand substation configurations. Before we get started, if you're new to my channel, my name is Daniel, and I'm an electrical engineer based in Texas, and on DC Engineering, we explore and expand our knowledge on all things related to substation design engineering. Let's start off with component identifiers and definitions. In the upcoming slides, I will be showing you circuit breakers, disconnect switches, and bus. Additionally, for illustration purposes, components shown in red will be energized, and components shown in blue will be de-energized. This will clearly show the outcomes of faults, and lastly, I want to define some terms I will be using. Reliability and flexibility. So reliability is determined by its ability to remain energized in the event of a fault. For example, if there is a fault on the bus and the whole substation goes down, then the reliability is low. A substation's flexibility is determined by its ability to remain energized during changing conditions. For example, if a single breaker in the substation needs to be serviced, will the whole substation need to be de-energized or can you do a partial outage where customers downstream are not affected by this? Starting off with radio bus configuration, this configuration consists of one main bus, breakers, disconnect switches, and lines that can either be loads or sources. Let's determine the reliability. If we get a fault on the line side of the breaker, then the rest of the system is protected because the breaker will trip, but any customers downstream of breaker 2 will be out of power. If we get a fault on the bus side of the breaker, then the whole system will have to go down to prevent this fault from, from going to the other lines. You, you would have to trip all breakers in this case. Additionally, if a fault happens on the line side of the breaker and the breaker happens to fail, meaning the breaker didn't trip, then the entire substation would experience an outage, ultimately making this system low on the reliability scale. Let's determine the flexibility. Let's assume that circuit breaker one needs maintenance. As soon as this breaker is stripped, everything downstream would no longer be energized. Same for all of the breakers, making this configuration low on the flexibility scale. After learning what I've just told you about radio bus configurations, I had a question. That question was, so for the radio bus configuration, in the event of any breaker maintenance, the customers downstream are just out of luck? And luckily the answer to that is no. One workaround for this is to use a bypass. This also comes with its own set of pros and cons. The flexibility increases now customers downstream still have the lights on, but in the unfortunate event of a line fault, the whole system will experience an outage because the protection was removed. So in this case, with a bypass switch, you increase the flexibility while decreasing the, fl the reliability. The advantages of this configuration is that it has the lowest cost, requires the least amount of land, and is simple to expand, operate, and protect. Disadvantages of this configuration include low reliability, low flexibility, and complete substation outages in the event of a bus fault or breaker failure. And the application of the radio bus configuration is for substations at 161 kV or less, and for areas where system reliability is not critical. And on a final note, this message is for newer engineers in substation design. It is possible to just learn the process and get by in this field. Meaning, you don't have to understand some of these things to get your job done, but it helps. It helps you understand the bigger picture and ultimately it helps you ask better questions. And remember, in this field, the answer you get is dependent on the quality of the question you give. So go out of your way to learn this. Learn the ins and outs of your field. You will, be, you will be able to provide more value to your company and you will enjoy what you do more because you will understand it more. All right, friends, we just talked about the radio bus configuration, the advantages, disadvantages, reliability, and flexibility of this configuration. Subscribe to be notified on my next video talking about what a ring bus configuration is. In the meantime, check out this video where I talk about my experiences in my first couple of years as an electrical engineer. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.